Good afternoon. You know, the very word negotiation is a bit of a, an anomaly because if those of you who know your George Orwell and remember his famous book, 1984, his, one of his main points was that if there isn't a word for something, there's no way you can do it. You know, if you, if you really want to control a population and you remove the words freedom of speech from the vocabulary, people don't look for freedom of speech because they have no way to define it. And yet the word negotiation, and these things have been going on since biblical times, a lot of them with the, with the big boss, um, the word actually only came into being in the late 16th century. And it was defined, according to the dictionary, as a doing of business. I think it's a little bit more than that. It's certainly an essential element of the doing of business. But uh, business, a lot of business was done before the end of the 15th, 16th century, but there didn't seem to be a word negotiating negotiations to cover the, the case. Anyway, if you look up negotiations on Google, you're going to find, I beg your pardon, on Amazon, we'll start with Amazon. Amazon, you'll find a rather large number of books that talk about negotiation in one way, shape, or form. To be approximately accurate, it's 13,471. Ouch. It's a lot of books. I have a theory that if there are a lot of books on any given subject, it means people really don't understand it very well. You only need one Tanakh, one Torah, one, one Old Testament, one uh, Koran, one, and yet you need 13,000 books on negotiations. Anyway, um, Google comes up with 22,800,000 hits. So that's not a big help if you really want to know something. So you're very lucky to be here because you're going to get the real story right from the horse's mouth and save you an awful lot of trouble plowing through 13,000 books and uh, God knows how many references on Google. I, I just want to give you a couple of disconnected thoughts on the subject of negotiation. One of the things that's going to be talked about, I'm sure at some point, Marty, I hope at least I'm expecting, is royalties. Royalties. You have a patent or a set of patents, you have some intellectual property, and you're going to license it. Either you're going to license it from somebody or you're going to license it to somebody. And you talk about the royalty rates. 1%, 5%, 3%, 10%, I don't know. But the question is, X percent of what? X percent of what? To get the amount of the royalty, you have to multiply the royalty base by the royalty percent. And I'll just give you one sort of interesting example that is a true life one that happened to me when I was young and beautiful, a long time ago, that is. Um, we had invented a process for growing sapphire crystals in any shape or form. And we could grow very long strips, which looked pretty much like they could be chopped up and sharpened and made into razor blades and even, theoretically, for everlasting razor blades. Everlasting, yeah, give or take a century or two. Um, it's low friction, you didn't need Teflon coatings, it's very hard, it's very wear resistant. So off we went, as very innocent young people, off we went to, well, we made a pass at Gillette, but Gillette is so not invented here, it isn't even worth bothering with them. So we picked another one, which happened to be a subsidiary of Philip Morris, those evil people who make most of their money with cigarettes. Back in those days, we, weren't, we didn't know as well how poisonous cigarettes were, so it was okay to deal with Philip Morris. So we go to Philip Morris and we meet the people there, and because our technology was so radical compared to what their engineers were doing, we didn't encounter not invented here. What we did encounter was a bunch of guys with green eye shades, or at least virtual green eye shades, and very, uh, the financial guys who were going to come in 
and uh, not get taken for a ride by this bunch of intellectuals from the East Coast. And so we started talking about royalty rates, but first we had to talk about the royalty base. And they said, well, what we visualize is a razor, a one-piece razor with a blade built in. You run, you run it until it wears out, which may be never, or maybe till you drop it and it breaks. And that, and just the blade is the piece, the cost of the blade is what the royalty percent will be based on. And I said, fat chance. I mean, you know, they could ascribe to that, that part of the razor any number they wanted, and we would have no way of knowing whether that was realistic. So I said, the royalty has to be based on the total selling price by Philip Morris, gem razors actually, of the whole razor. They said, well, they didn't use rude words explicitly, but they made it very clear what they thought of that idea. So I said, I want to talk to the boss of Philip Morris. Begin take a breath. And they said, well, uh, 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 that will take some time to arrange. I said, good. We went off. And we spent the time doing something which turned out to be an inspiration, which was make a model where you could explain to the guy who makes real decisions, like the CEO or the chief executive involved in that particular activity, something he can handle. Not some theoretical concept of blades and, and, and whatnot. So we had our model maker, we had a wonderful guy, a model maker, make a model of an old-fashioned cutthroat razor. Have you ever seen those things? You know, the blade folds out and... They're also Jack the Ripper, I think, used. I mean, they're very useful for all kinds of functions in addition to shaving. But anyway, we had this beautiful thing made. It had a, bl a, a sapphire blade, which wasn't very sharp, but it had the same sort of contour as a cutthroat razor. And it had a, I think it was mahogany, but it was some very fine wood as a handle. And we, and we had it put in a velvet, red velvet lined box with beautiful box, wrapped up very nicely. So they arrange a meeting for us with this character from Philip Morris, and I think he must have come from central casting, because if you'd, if you'd asked for an executive of a top company, th that's who probably would have showed up. Anyway, we go in there, and all the... Uh, behind him, in a big semicircle behind his desk, were all the people who'd been telling us that uh, there's nobody hiding in there, I can assure you. I him. Um, he had all these people behind him. If you don't want to hear it, you just have to say so. And, I'm quick to say it. Uh, and, you know, they were explaining to him, he said, what's all this about, gentlemen? And the way he said gentlemen made it very clear that he had no no expectation of seeing any gentleman in that room at that time. Certainly not me and certainly not his, even his own colleagues. What's this all about? I have 15 minutes. I handed him the box and he unwrapped it very slowly. Beautiful mahogany box. Opened it up. Took out this thing. Opened it up. Looked at it. Held it up to the light. Ran his fingers over it. It wasn't sharp. We would have hated to cut cut up a Philip Morris executive, especially on his own home ground. And he looked at it, and he just turned round to his colleagues and he said, give them what they're asking. <laughs> so just in that, by having that model and having this thing, which conveyed not just an image of what the technology might lead to, but almost a physical manifestation of it, even though they obviously, that is not the way razors are built these days. And so we negotiated a deal for a 3% royalty on the set net, selling, net selling price of the razor. Wonderful story, right? How did it end? Well, it ended the way most high-tech stories end is we could never make the bloody blades. They all had anyway. So, but the, the fact I'm trying to make to you is that it is possible and sometimes, and this is only one of several examples, and I don't think I have time for another one, do I? No. Um, that 
if you can, when it comes to royalties, be sure that you have a clear agreement with whoever it is, it's either your licensor or your licensee, on what the royalty rate is based on. What, what do you multiply by X percent to get the number where the money changes hands? So there you go, and I'm sure it will come up one time or another, but the main thing is to hear what my colleagues have to say, and especially Barty. Thank you. We have a 40-minute break, so if anybody wants to hear the second half of this story, you're welcome to chase him in the break. Um.